This is the most counterintuitive probability problem I've ever come across. These probability puzzles at first seem like they should have the same answer, but in fact they don't. In the first problem, you're talking to someone you've never met before, and they tell you that they've got two children, at least one of whom is a boy, and the question is, what's the probability that both children are boys? In the second problem, again, you're talking to someone you've never met before, and they tell you they've got two children, the oldest of whom is a boy, now what's the probability that both children are boys? Um, and in problem three, you're speaking to someone that you've never met before, and they tell you that they've got two children, at least one of which is a boy born on a Tuesday. What's the probability that both children are boys? And it may seem really surprising that this information has any bearing on the problem at all, but in fact it does. It makes a big difference to the answer to the problem. This is one of my favourite probability puzzles and one that even experts take a long time to get their head around. I've had so many discussions, debates, arguments about this with all sorts of people from teachers to mathematicians to accountants and actuaries and they all love talking about this problem and very rarely will everyone agree on the answer to it. But it does actually have a very clear-cut answer and a good intuitive way of thinking about it and that's what I'm going to tell you about in this video. Now even question one people argue about, it's a famous problem called the two boys problem. Remember this problem says that you're talking to someone you've never met before and they tell you they've got two children, at least one of whom is a boy, and we want to know what's the probability that both children are boys. And I should say that the precise wording of this question really matters, and lots of places you see this problem written down and it really is genuinely unclear what the answer should be. For example, the problem is often phrased without saying at least one, you're just told the person tells you that they've got two children, one of whom is a boy. You could argue that the probability that they have two boys is zero, because if they had two boys they would have told you they had two boys they wouldn't have said they had one but we're phrasing this precisely and we are interpreting that they mean that they've got one or more boys to understand the solution to this problem we can draw a sample space diagram that shows the possibilities for the first child and the second child each child will either be a boy or not and let's assume that 50% of births in the population are boys. In fact, that rate isn't exactly 50%, but it's good enough for this example. There are four possibilities. The first child is a boy, and the second one is a boy as well. The first is a boy and the second is not. The first is not a boy and the second is, and both children are not boys. All four of these options are equally likely. They will each have probability one half times one half or one quarter, 25% of the time we will see each of these options. In particular, the probability of having exactly one boy is a half, 50% of the time that happens because we could either have the boy first or second. Now when we're told at least one of the children is a boy, we can exclude this fourth option here that both children are not boys, but we can't exclude any of the others. Then we see that there are three options left that are all equally likely and only one of them has both of the children as boys. And so the probability that both children are boys is one in three or one third. Now that may or may not be surprising depending how much you've thought about it before, but it basically comes down to the fact that it was more likely that we would have exactly one boy than having two boys to begin with, so it's still more likely that we've got exactly one boy than two boys here. So how do the other problems here give us different answers then? And in particular, how does that information about the boy being born on a Tuesday may have any bearing on this problem at all? But before we get to, to the Tuesday boy problem, let's examine problem two. It's the easiest of the three problems, but it's very helpful to understand what's going on. Remember in problem two, we're speaking to someone we've never met before, and they tell us they've got two children, the oldest of which is a boy. And we want to know what the probability of them having two boys is. Well, if you have one child, and they're a boy, and then you have another child, assuming that birds are independent, then the probability of the second child being a boy is just 50-50. The second child is either a boy or not a boy, and we're saying that's 50% either way. If you want to think about that sample space diagram with the two children, we're eliminating two of the options here where the first child is not a boy, and we're just left with the other two, so it's 50-50. And the reason it's 50-50 is because we have that specific information about a particular child. Similarly, if someone told you that they've got two children and then they said, ah, oh, here's my son standing next to me, the probability that their other child would be a boy would be 50-50 again. I've got that specific child here with me. And so the probability that the other one is a boy is 50-50. And that specificity is what we should think about as we can move on to the Tuesday boy problem. So we're on to problem three. You're talking to someone you've never met before and they tell you they've got two children, at least one of which is a boy born on a Tuesday. So we're going to draw a sample space diagram for the Tuesday boy problem. And you can see we've got the basic grid of four as we had before, but each of those is now subdivided so we can see what day of the week each child was born on from Monday to Sunday. There are 196 possibilities in total here. That's 14 squared or 49 times four if you want to look at it that way. 
and we can count how many of these possibilities involve at least one of the children being a boy born on Tuesday. If you count those up, you will find there are 27 possibilities. How many of those have two boys? You can count those up here, and there are exactly 13. So the probability is 13 27ths. Remember the answer when we just knew it was at least one boy is one third, when we know a specific child is a boy, it's one half. And this information about the boy being born on a Tuesday has brought the answer much closer to one half than to one third. So what's actually going on here? Well, in a sense, the math speaks for itself, but we'd like some intuition as well. And I think that problem too is a really good way to understand the solution here. In problem one, when we knew nothing about which of the two children was the boy, the probability was a third. When we knew exactly which child we were talking about, it's a half. And when you're told that the boy is born on a Tuesday, it narrows down the possibility. It's quite unlikely in advance that both the children are going to be born on Tuesdays. So somehow telling you the boy is born on a Tuesday is probabilistically like almost specifying which child it is. I'm not necessarily telling you for sure I'm talking about one child, but when I say, ah, I've got a boy born on a Tuesday and I've got another child, it's a bit closer to that situation where I'm telling you my oldest child is a boy than it is when I'm just not telling you any information about which child I'm talking about. I've actually got one more problem for you that will take you even further along this line of thought and might help you understand that even better. I've had so many discussions and debates and arguments about this problem with all sorts of people. I even wrote an article for it in the Actuary magazine a couple of years ago, and it was a Christmas edition of the magazine. And the final question I asked there was another variant on this problem. Again, you're speaking to someone you've never met before, and they tell you that they've got two children, at least one of whom is a boy born on Christmas Day. Now what's the probability that both children are boys? So try to work out the answer to that question and put it in the comments below, and I'll reply to some of you who get it right. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you'll really like this one as well.